Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Justin Fatika. I'll give a reflection on divine mercy and much more. Well, welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight, our guest is Justin Fatika. He is the founder and he's a guy in charge of Heart as Nails Ministry. And he always has great insights on things. And we're going to be talking to him tonight about the whole coronavirus experience, the ongoing experience that he's been through. He mm -hmm. always has uh, great insights and so fasten your seatbelts. Yeah. Justin, he is about embracing the cross, but we embrace it. We embrace the cross because we know that God loves us. And that is something at the very core at Hard as Nails Ministry. And that's something that is deeply just ingrained in Justin, and that really comes out through any interview he does. So, Whatever he says. Yeah. Yeah. We're now going to a reflection with Father Mark on Divine Mercy. Sunday we celebrated the Feast of Divine Mercy, and I think everyone agrees one of the greatest parables on mercy is uh, the parable of the prodigal son. If you remember the story we're told where the younger son asked for his inheritance, and he goes off and squanders that inheritance on a distant land and a life of dissipation. Famine hits the land, he hires himself out as a local laborer, and he's hungry, and he looks at the slop that they're feeding the, the swine and longs to eat it. And we're told that he comes to his senses and realizes that the hired hands in his father's house are living better than he is. You know, so he decides to return. And there's a wonderful expression that he arose or he got up. And in Luke's Gospel, it was the same verb used to describe Jesus' resurrection. That it's like the movement of grace in him calling him back home to the Father. You know, it's by that power of the resurrection, by that grace. And he plans out this apology, you know, that, you know, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against earth. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. He plans this apology. And when he's approaching home, his father sees him at a distance. It suggests that the father's waiting, you know, and looking, you know, in, in the afternoon. Maybe this is the day my son shall return. And finally that day comes. And so he runs and, and greets him and grabs hold of him, right, and embraces him. And he, he takes the finest robe and puts it on him, the ring, the sandals, and slaughters the fatted calf and has a great celebration. And he says, he was dead and has come to life again. The father says this. He was lost and has been found. And he tells the older son that everything I have is yours, that being a son in my house, we share everything. And so this is a time of great celebration. It's a great image of the mercy of God for us. And, and we turn from sin and come home and come back to that relationship with the Father. That no behavior can separate us from the fact that we're sons or daughters and that we belong to God, part of his family. I was recently reading the diary, Divine Mercy, and I just want to pull some ideas from that that connects to this parable, some of the things that Jesus told St. Faustina. One thing he said is that God is more generous towards sinners than towards the just. He'd even say that the sinners have more of a right to his mercy than the just. And we see that in the parable because they slaughter the fatted calf. They have a great celebration, a party. He says, Jesus in the diary says, I cannot punish even the greatest sinner. If he makes an appeal to my compassion, I justify him by my mercy. Remember, the son wanted to just be treated as one of the hired workers, but when he gives that apology to the father, he doesn't even get that part out. The father interrupts him. It's unthinkable that you're a hired worker. You're a son. You belong to me. Jesus in the diary says that the vessel of, by the vessel of trust, Souls draw forth graces, that if we trust in him, if we have faith in him, he will lavish that mercy upon us. The prodigal son does have to return home, but it really is a barely a step, a faltering step, you know, and I think God will take our, our two mites, our two coins, and do, does something wonderful with it, even if we have very little faith. You know, when we take that step towards him by God's grace, he just lavishes his mercy upon us. The diary and papal writings say that mercy is the greatest attribute of God. He is mercy itself. The Father 
loses his dignity in a sense and runs to meet the sun. That's, that's mercy itself. He's, he's running towards us. He's calling us back to himself. You know, in the diary as well, Jesus tells Faustina that there, it is a great struggle for the kingdom of God. It is a struggle. We're just not passive receptors. It is a struggle. This, the, young, the prodigal son heard that call to a life of dissipation. The older son tells us that he wasted the money on prostitutes. You know, there's a tendency, a call to sin in all of us, and we need to struggle against that. We need to keep repeating, keep returning to the Father's house, and it is a battle. And we see, maybe most importantly, that mercy restores us to sonship. It doesn't humiliate us. You know, that ring that he receives is a sign of a signet ring, a sign of being a son. We can never lose that. We can live in a way that denigrates it, and mercy picks us up, you know, and restores, reminds us, renews that sonship in us that we need to live by. Jesus is pouring his mercy upon us in these great feasts that we have in the church. Let us approach him in faith to receive all he wants to give us. Justin, welcome to Life on the Rock. We have you on uh, Skype here. Uh, how is everything going on in Syracuse right now? It's doing all right. I'm excited to be here with you, Brother John. And, you know, like everybody, we're in the quarantine, but, right. you know, God wants to speak through the cross. Right. Yeah, 2020 has been a very interesting year. I don't think anybody expected this to really happen, to be kind of just quarantined and landlocked and all that. Um, but I wanted to ask you, what, what, just real briefly, what is your ministry? What is Tough as Nails? Yeah, Hard as Nails is a ministry for the hardest of hearts. You know, like if, if you say out there, this, this kid, this adult, this family, they can't be impacted. Well, I got news for you. With our mission, we believe that God will cut through the core of the heart of the person. And we have a mission to awaken the world to the power of God's love. And our vision is to make a world where no one suffers alone. Mm -hmm. So that's our mission. And right that's now, yeah, right now we're definitely in a, just a very odd time, I think, throughout the world, just with this whole coronavirus thing going on. But what is a message of hope that you want to give? Well, well I want to tell you, if the devil can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. Oh, okay, yeah, that is true. <laughs> if the devil can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. Uh, the, the Lord's been speaking a word to me in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, verse 18. Look, look it up to 25. Mm. You see, the cross is a message of fool and foolishness, as we know, right? For those who are perishing. But for us, it's the power of God. Mm-hmm. The cross to the world is a message of foolishness. See, every single one of us came to Jesus through a cross. We had a cross. We, we received the crown of life, the gift of the Eucharist, the gift of confession. We went in that confessional and transformed our life, right? Right. Well, guess what? This cross right here, this cross, it's original sin, yes, but this cross we go through can be a cross to change our lives forever. I, I, I'm spending more time with my son, oh. my, my four sons, okay. my daughter. I'm spending more time with my, my wife. Um, God's asking me to reach out and disciple more, not to stay closed in on myself. Mm -hmm. God's asking me to reach out to those people that I started to be Paul and they were my Timothy and to reach out to them and build them up. And people, God's challenged me to reach out to my Pauls, like the Father Larry, like I would have never reached out to Father Larry and have him on my EWTN uh, Facebook Live show. But I had time. So, hey, Father, you want to, Father Larry Richards, you want to come on? You know, and, and then he came on. That's my Paul. And he's yelling at me like, oh, now you call me because of the coronavirus. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> but like God's asking us to reach out to those people that helped us grow in our faith and say, what message do you have to yeah. give him? 
we got to reach out to Yoda, baby. It's Yoda time, you know? That's right. It's Yoda time. And it's time for us to to reach out to our Lukes and, mm-hmm. and who, who we're leading uh, to Christ. So right. that, that's where I'm at right now, and that's where I'm going to be. Yeah. A lot of, I mean, it seems like everybody's life has taken just a radical change with this coronavirus going on. But what are some of the spiritual lessons that you've learned individually with this time and maybe some other spiritual lessons that you've learned with your family? Well, well, my, my grandma, she spoke to me in Sicilian last week. I called her. She's 100 years oh, old, wow. my grandma. Wow. And she, she, she gives me Sicilian proverbs. Okay. Like Sicilian proverbs. And the proverb she told me this past week was, if you do good, forget about it. <laughs> but if you do wrong, think about it. Oh. Okay. And I think this yeah. coronavirus has gotten us all to think about the wrong that we've done. It's gotten us to reflect. Mm-hmm. You see, a lot of people are complaining, saying, oh, look at that person. Look, if you were the authority and you were the decision maker, okay? Yeah. God would have made you the, the authority. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm not the authority. I'm the authority for Hardest Dance Ministry. Uh, but that's about it. And I'm authority for my family. But every ounce of complaining, did you know 50, did you know our mental energy is taken away by 50% by every complaint? No, I didn't know. So that. every oh. every complaint we make takes out double the energy from the human psyche. See, we've got to focus on being grateful. And I've learned like reach out to my grandmother. Mm. And it's true. I need to not focus on, oh, look at the good I could be doing or what could the good I've done? What's going on with this virus? I need to think about what God's purifying me and pruning me and grafting me into the man I need to be so I can go out there and uh, be the grateful man of God he's asking me to be and serve others. For the, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but uh, but to serve, to give his life for the ransom of many, Mark 10, 45. Oh, wow. So... With this whole time, a lot of times, you know, a lot of churches aren't open. Not everybody's able to make it to mass or confession. And a lot of times there's a lot of confusion going on. But I think you hit a point is that just being obedient, being docile, that that in itself is very virtuous. Can you comment on that? Yeah, look, uh, Padre Pio could tell you all about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you know, he like, could. You, you, you think that guy wanted to be... Uh, obedient to the things that were asked of him. Catherine Siena can tell you all about obedience. Mm -hmm. Look, we have to have obedience with charity. We got to get into the novenas, the devotions, the rosary. I know EWT is doing a great job with the devotions, the rosaries, the novenas, the stations. We've got to get back into the stations of the cross. Right. Anything that's out of our authority is going to do no good to push back the power of prayer you see this is a, this is not a fight against flesh and blood these are spiritual dark wars that we don't understand that are mm-hmm. out of our human mind and comprehension right you see i always i always think about why did god have jesus die on a cross because it's just so obnoxious and so absurd that it would be the only way for god to speak to the human person. Mm -hmm. And think about the sinfulness we've done. Think about the worst sinful things. It's obnoxious what some of us have done. I mean, I speak for myself. Yeah. But guess what? God speaks, and this seems foolish what's going on, but God has a message for us. And I think what the message is, we need to reach out to Paul. Who's that mentor in your life? Mm -hmm. Say, hey, can you teach me Yoda? You know, (laughs) please. We need to reach out to that Barnabas. Like, my mom's my Barnabas. I could go kill somebody, and it's evil and wrong. My mom my mom would at least say, you did it the best way. You know what I mean? Like, now, of course, that's wrong and horrible. But my mom's a, a, a my Barnabas. She's the son of encouragement. She encour- We need to reach out to that person who encourages us, even though we have done wrong. Mm-hmm. And you know what? We need to reach out to the Timothy the person that we're discipling to heaven, the person that we're leading to heaven. I think right now the point that God wants of us one by one is to pick the people in our life we need to reach out to. And you know why? You see, our we have a battle in our mind right now, each and every one of us. 
And what we're used to, we battle our mind by the external task list we have. Yeah. But guess what? That's been taken away in a lot of ways. Yeah. We have to learn, we have to battle our mind through the self-reflective person we are in our prayer life. We have to let the Father fill us so much that that love is so strong that when we have no tasks on a task list, Mm -hmm. that we're still as certain in the love of God as if we had the task list to get us through the day. Put that task list aside. Slow yourself down. Because you know what? In America, we're used to living the rat race, brother, yeah, right? Yes, we are, yeah. You know, we're the American rat race, right? Yeah. Well, guess what? Guess what? Even if you win the rat race, I've heard someone say, you're still a rat. <laughs> Man, you're that? still a rat. Yeah. So let's get out of the rat race. Yeah. And let's, let's, let's get into the love of God race that can fill our soul. Yeah. And we can go out and be the person we're called to be to win souls for Jesus yeah. Christ. I believe this needs to put a passion and urgency. Now, I'm a daily communicant. So for me to not receive the Eucharist, mm. did you know, since I was 17 years old, I've received the Eucharist an average of three to five times a week since I was seven. Now, you probably got better stats than me. But bottom line is this. It's like, I love, I'm dying right now. Yeah. But guess, mark my words, when, when the, when the, the gates open and that Eucharist, when I'm ready to receive it, the passion I'm going to have for the Eucharist, I hope will be far more than it was before this happened. And the desire, that's a big one. I think making spiritual communions during this time, even frequently throughout the day to really spark up that desire and even a, a greater intensity and a, just the devotion to the Blessed Sacrament, I think is so important during this time. But I also wanted to ask you, a lot of times just with everything going around, around us, there's been what I kind of sense a big disappointment. You think of like how school has changed for a lot of young people. They're not going to do a graduation or a prom. Uh, a lot of people, just their whole lives, weddings have been canceled, just kind of thrown all over the place. So, and people have just been dying. And, um, but there's kind of this sense of just disappointment too. And I guess a restructuring in a lot of ways. But what words of encouragement do you have to say uh, to just kind of what's going on right now? I think what matters is, is that that we have to look at at what truly matters in life. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you know, you're going to have the prom that you miss, or you're going to have the graduation that you're going to miss. But let's hug our family like we never hugged them before. Mm. Let, let's let's realize that the year that you know uh, COVID nineteen happened. Yeah, I loved my parent my grandmother, my grandson, my granddaughter. I wrote them letters. I, 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 I drove by their house and beeped the horn like I never beeped the horn in my <laughs> life. I, you know, whatever. We, I made a poster like I've never made before. Uh-huh. I mean, we have more passion, urgency, and zeal for our grandchildren, for our children, and for our sons and daughters, and for our parents than we've ever had before. And may we be that person that doesn't let all the complaining and negativity take the spirit of God away from us. Because mark my words, God knows what we can, we can do when we're a vessel that encourages. I want to just tell you, um, I've had more people reach out to me in the past month. Mm-hmm. And now I'm, I'm a guy, you know, I'm, you know, travel, I speak, I meet thousands of people, you know. Uh, I work with you guys the past four years. I want to thank you for that. And I really have found a, found a fondness for EWTN, being able to tune into other things and being able to be encouraged by all of you. I've actually had more of a, a passion and thankfulness for your network. And uh, I've had more people reach out to me hmm. in this past month than I think in the past five years. And what does that say about our culture? Yeah. You know, so I want to encourage us just to be that person that reaches out. Somebody says, I'm depressed right now. And I said, reach out reach and out, embrace yeah. it. Reach out and embrace this. So hopefully you can be encouraged to reach out to somebody because when you do that, you're going to save their life. Yeah. And also a lot of times just kind of during this time that we're in, there's just a lot of isolation going on. 
Would you see that as a good thing, maybe a bad thing, a neutral thing? Is it time for more self-reflection? Where are we are? Where, where, where do you stand with the whole isolation thing? Well, I, I, look, there's a reason that when we got these iPhones and these phones that there's been more mental illness in this great nation mm -hmm. than ever before, brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, isolation, uh, I, I don't know if I like the word. What, I like the word like that's good is like, you know, con being contemplative, meaning mm -hmm. we're, we're contemplating what God is speaking to us. Mm -hmm. So doing that for two, three hours a day and this virus is good. But anything more than that, maybe you have one day where you go on a few days of retreat and you create that. But my big thing is you got to be intentional. Mm. Isolation can't be an impulsivity. Oh, man, I just sat here for four hours. We need to be intentional about contemplating mm. or isolation. If you're intentional, say, okay, Lord, you're going to fill me for this next five hours. And then when I'm filled, you're going to speak to me. And then you're going to ask things of me, maybe to do or maybe to think about or maybe to reflect. That's different. Mm -hmm. But if we're, impuls if we're impulsively going into isolation, that's a vice. Right. And so isolation becomes a vice because we're impulsively self-destructing ourselves. My buddy's a firefighter, and he said he's gotten more calls, Brother John, mm. in the past month for suicide and abuse mm. than in, in any month since he's been a firefighter. Yeah. So we have to understand there's another spiritual battle we're facing that we can't run from. And if you're that person out there... Reach out to EWTN, have somebody pray with you, reach yeah. out to a family member, have somebody uh, encourage you. And remember this, you know, the, the, the greatest thing you can ever do for somebody is to let them know that you need them. Like, I need you, brother. Right. I need yeah. the network. I, I need your support, your encouragement. Like, yeah. you know, when you know that I need you, like that, that, that fills me as much as it fills you. Mm hmm well, we have to keep praying, and it's hard to believe this went as fast as it did. But you're amazing, Justin. You're amazing. Uh, well, well <laughs> so. I'm honored, and uh, make sure I have a lot of new guests coming up. I've got Harrison Bucker on my EWTN uh, live show. I've got Bishop Frank this Thursday uh, coming up. Uh, all kinds of different oh, wow. people, so I'm excited to, to work with many, many different people. So. Uh, I'm so thankful for you, Brother John, Father Mark, Father John, Paul. Tell everybody say hello. I will. Well, thank you, Justin. What struck me about uh, Justin Fatika's interview with Brother John is that quote from Scripture he started with early on was that for those being saved, the cross is the power of God. Mm -hmm. So that's our End of the Vineyard Challenge this week, to remember that the cross is the power of God in our life, that it's through that cross we are saved, that we share in the cross of Christ. You know, this coronavirus experience has been a big suffering for many people. And, and, but the cross is always there in our life, but certainly we've had time to reflect during the, the quarantines mm -hmm. and things. And to accept the cross, to turn to God, to ask for strength, and sometimes we can forget the cross yeah. and its power in our life. I also think a lot of times suffering does bring out, it, a lot of times it will tell us what is a priority in life and what's just trivial. We don't really need it. I think Justin really hit it, the, hit it on the point that we need to be grateful. There are things that we do need to be grateful for. One of them is family. That's a big one. You know, that those, you know, that we're surrounded by love and those that we love and reach out to love. I think that's a big part of it is that if we just kind of buckle down on ourselves and just mm -hmm. think of, oh, woe is me, you know, we're, we're looking at a very skewed picture. Whenever, right. you mm -hmm. know, whenever we start looking outside of ourselves and looking mm -hmm. at others, you know, joy, peace, happiness, that does fill our hearts and our spirits and our minds. So. Right. Suffering the cross can be a temptation to turn away from God, mm -hmm. to isolate from others. But if we can embrace it, take it to God, ask for strength, it is the power of God working in our life to sanctify us and to help others that God will draw fruitfulness out of our life. So we'll send you into that vineyard with that task to remember the power of the cross 
May our Heavenly Father shine his face upon you. May he give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. You are faithful.